When I landed on Holly Warner's website, I found myself navigating through a variety of topics and suggestions that I hadn't quite expected. I knew there was a strong background in nutrition and the title of functional medicine practitioner, but it was the extra layer of detail and suggestion that made her low key and her entertaining videos all the more interesting. Leading functional diagnostic and stress management expert. That was a new term I'll have to ask her about. Plus, Holly, who is also a cannabinoid therapist, specializes in hormone imbalances, bioidentical hormone replacement, uh, thyroid, gut, and adrenal health, as well as autoimmune disease. So this is just listing off a number of the things we're going to be getting to today. It's a world where science meets lifestyle, where one singular approach doesn't fit all, and where understanding everyday factors like stress and day-to-day -day tasks affect every aspect of your home and your workplace, as well as your home life balance. In one video, she can be talking about mouth taping, while the next focus on, focuses on how we should be chewing and how chewing affects our thyroid. So just when you think you may have run out of solutions, we are here to give you just a couple more. So welcome to Living Your Life with Leanne Lang, the podcast brought to you by Extension Marketing. And as always, for more information, you can head to extensionmarketing.com. Holly, I'm so excited for today. <laughs> Me too. Yes. Uh, I was overwhelmed by the amount of topics when I went on your website. Yes. I mean, I knew I was kind of, you know, what I was getting into, but it was like, it's like the splash of a whole bunch of new information that I thought I knew. And then I was like, oh my God, I don't know any of this. Story of my life. <laughs> do, do you get a lot of that? Like I people do. are overwhelmed by how much is out there? Yep, yeah, I do. Okay. So I always go back to the why. And that's because we haven't had this history. I didn't have you on. I don't remember interviews on, on the show. For me, it's always the why as to how you ended up here. And as I can tell, incredibly passionate about what it is that you do. Um, I was pissed because, and that's usually like, that's the fire that, you know, lit under my butt was that I was pissed seeing friends and family. And even at the time they weren't patients, they were clients. Now they are patients coming to me and saying, you know, I've suffered X, Y, and Z my whole life, or I've spent 10 years with these symptoms to have tests done by my GP who has said, you're fine. That's normal. It's okay. Or it's all in your head. And that pissed me off because whether it's in your head or it's in your stomach is irrelevant. Something's there. You're feeling something and it needs to be addressed. You can't send somebody away without a hope. So I decided being a patient advocate was where I needed to be. And with all my background, when it came from the medical side of things, as well as the integrative and holistic side, I needed to find a way to bring that to my patients to get them not just the answers, but also a plan of action. And that, that was my why, was being a patient advocate. Were you ever a, a patient? I mean, has your health always been pretty easy? Healthy kid, healthy lifestyle, you know, active, ate well. You know, sometimes I find that people didn't quite live that way up until, you know, they started studying or they had, you know, this reason. What was childhood like? Oh God, childhood was like craft dinner for every meal for years and years and years because that was the only thing I wanted to eat. I come from, you know, an Irish family where it was meat and potatoes and that was what it was. I grew up with healthy food for the most part as we're taught is healthy food. And then as I continued on, you know, when I was doing my master's, I'm in university, I was bartending. So it was, you know, dinner was a poutine washed back with a couple of shots of tequila. <laughs> like, you know. Are I'm, you from Ottawa? I am. Okay, I am, so yeah. may I ask which one of these establishments you were doing this at? <laughs> I actually bartended at the New Den, which is a strip club, which is fantastic because for, you know, uh, gosh, almost four years, it was, I had my own little bar at the Chandelier Bar. I got to know all of the patrons. They'd come in. I know who would come in for which part of the shift. You know, the blue collar workers came in right after work on a Friday. I knew who's having what beer and my tips reflected that. I walked out with between $650 and $1,000 a night, oh which my God. never happens nowadays. But back then I was like, I paid university. I'm like, cash, have a good day. It was amazing. You think about it, right? To be able to yeah. have that cash and the disposable income oh to be God. able to just pay it forward for university. Right? That this was this was the means of being able to get that education. I had 10K underneath my mattress. I was that girl. <laughs> like, who has that? That's crazy. I wish I had that now. <laughs> I just what was the movie that I just saw with Jennifer Lopez? Uh, oh, Hustlers. Oh, hu yes. yes. I'm you know, there's there, some great business women out there. I'm telling you, there's truth to that. 
there was two. I sold my shirt for 300 bucks one night. I had a bikini on. Here's my shirt. He was so drunk. Gave the cash, turned around to have a conversation. I took my shirt back, put it on. He didn't even notice. <laughs> hey, listen. Okay. I did not know that's where the podcast was going to go about four or five minutes in, but that's, that seems to be where we're going to go. Although I can tell you that Holly's got some way more interesting stories that actually follow from there. Okay. So you're actually at school. What are you studying? So I didn't know what I wanted to take. I started out at 18 thinking I wanted to be an esthetician. I did that and I loved it, but I loved the medical side of it where I wanted to understand, you know, every, every bone in the face and every muscle and the, you know, the connective tissues and everything's learned in Latin. And then I went on to medical aesthetics, which is, is a cute way of saying you have your master's in, in aesthetics, but it wasn't enough. So I went to Toronto. I did some stuff in Toronto. Um, I just continued. I went back to the States. So my dad is from New York. My sister's from New York. They're all American. So I went to um, SUNY. I've done some stuff in California when I lived in California. Uh, I did MUI, which is Maryland University. I've like literally my resume is like a novel. There's so much that I've done. And some of it was online and some of it was in person, which I'm fortunate to have that. So I am a physician assistant. I do have my PA. I was the director of a medical facility here locally in Ottawa and then co-director um, hair transplants. I would assist the doctor during surgery at one place. And then the next, it was just managing all the patient's charts and all of that. So everything just kind of progressed. I have been blessed to take courses that at the time, I didn't have certification for, but I was allowed to take. So here's your money, sit down on the course, but you can't get a certificate. Physicians training for bioidentical hormones. I am not a physician, but I was able to take the training in Toronto. So blessed to have been able to get that understanding and say, hang on a second, this is my jam. How can I, how can I use this? I'm not a doctor. I can't prescribe, but I understand how to read the lab work because I've been doing this for so many years and I get it. I get the hormone aspect. So I put it in a bucket in the back shelf and I waited until I could bring that bucket back out again. And fast forward many, many years to where I am today. So about seven years ago, I was able to bring on nurse practitioners, MDs in the States, because I am global, and nurse practitioners in Canada, predominantly in Ontario, who are amazing. They have all of the knowledge of an MD and sorry to the doctors out there, none of the ego, which I like. And they have this quality of care and compassion because they're nurses and nurses are the key to our medical system. They have the heart and they have the knowledge. So having them as part of my team, because it's never just me, it's always my team, allowed me to offer my patients what they weren't getting. The yes when they were getting a no, the uh, ability to find an answer, to draw blood work. And when I say draw blood work, our lab requisition is so extensive that the lab techs, they know it's coming from me before the person says where it's coming from because it's 15 vials of blood or nine vials of blood. And so it, it just sort of brought me to where I am today, which is being able to do the blood work, have the knowledge, and then I continue to train. You know, Dr. Mohamed Mansour is one of the top geneticists, one of the top three actually in the world, nominated for a Nobel Prize, took me under his wing, taught me a lot about the genetic aspect of things, which is mind blowing. So anything that's missing, I've added. I mentioned in the intro, the, the, the bonding of science, Yeah, <laughs> right? There's, there's the science, uh, and lifestyle. There's so much more to what is happening in our bodies oh, than yeah. we think of just eating healthy, mm -hmm. you know, doing a little exercise, being mindful. Like there's so many things that are, that yeah. are going on. What has been the biggest you know, jaw dropping thing that you say to most of your patients or clients when they come in? Oh gosh, there's a lot of them. The most jaw dropping thing I would have to say, other than the, you know, manage your stress and get your sleep, the obvious, um, chew your food. Oh, and now I want to get to this chewing your food stuff. This is, this is crazy. A lot of the stuff and some of the videos that you had. Okay, but I don't. I'm gonna get there, but just not quite yet. Okay, okay. You have the nutrition background. Yes, clinical. Yes. So, when people are coming, is it that you notice the food, the diet, the movement, the exercise, the gut health? Like, where are you going first? I kind of hit it intuitively. When you do an intake with me, there's about 14 pages. I go over that, I review it. And then we have a conversation about where I've put my little red circles. 
what do I want to know a little bit more about, about this? Because I can connect the dots. I've been doing this for over 20 years. So when I connect the dots, I go, mm, I need a little bit more information about this. And sometimes it's, it's the simplest thing where someone comes on and says, I have all of these symptoms. I know their test is going to come back with elevated antibodies for Hashimoto's. I know this. I know they've been fighting for 10 years to get a diagnosis and none has been given because their doctor isn't testing that. But I also know that they've moved from one area of town to the other and it's created an issue with their symptoms. And I say, you know what? There's a little bit more fluoride in your water in that area because I see it with other patients. Let's see what we can do by taking the fluoride out and see if it helps your thyroid because thyroid hormone binds to the same receptors as a lot of other um, minerals and things within the body. And fluoride, cadmium, uh, chloride, things like that, they all bind to that thyroid receptor. It's like a big competition. So if you can take them out, filter that water, let's see if we can get some improvement just by doing that. And it works. So you're telling me that even just a simple move, yeah. people moving from one area to another yep. based on the water intake, based on what they're drinking. Mm -hmm. Well changes. water, city water, what area of the city are you in? I know they tell us that it's all, that's all coming from the same place. It's all city water and it's, we have some of the cleanest and best water, you know, out there on the planet. However, there's a lot of fluoride in it and that's going to hit the pineal gland. It's also going to bind to your thyroid receptors. And as much as it sounds woo woo, the results come back supported by the lab work saying that this person has eliminated this one factor, just that. Humor me and let's just do this one thing. And then it come back and there you go. So there's how, answer. how would you fix it when you talk about there's, there's a component missing or there's a component that needs to be added? Like what, what would that be? Well, it depends. So it depends on the case. So it's very much case by case. In this one that I'm referencing, it literally was just, she bought a filtration system for her house, uh, stopped drinking bottled water. She filtered her water that she was drinking. That was the only thing that she kind of tweaked. Um, they ended up putting a, a whole house system in and her labs got even better after that as well. So it, it was like baby steps, like stop drinking and cooking with the tap water. Let's use this instead. So they started with a Berkey and then they went onto a different filtration system. And then they did the whole house one, which was like four grand or something. But she said for her, she said that it's worth it because I, I need this in order to have my health back. So what was she feeling? What would this client have been feeling? And symptoms of Hashimoto's. So, so what is that? She had, it's, um, it's an autoimmune thyroid disease is what it is. So some people have hypo, some people have hyper, there's graves, there's Hashi. Hashimoto's is more common. I had it. I say had because I no longer do. That's uh, a whole other story. So when say, people say you can't reverse it, well, I'm sitting here, so yes, you can. As are many other people who have. Doesn't mean it always is the case, but it can happen. For her, it was, you know, uh, fatigue, weight gain, um, those were the brain fog. Those are the three main ones that she had just tired all of the time. No performance, couldn't work out in the gym. And that was part of her livelihood. I'm, okay. I'm sorry, but Holly, you mentioned fatigue, weight gain. Yeah. And what was the third? Uh, fatigue, weight gain, energy, concentration, right. brain fog. Cognitive. I yeah. mean, I'm sorry, but you're just listening off like 75% of the population yes. as to how we're, you know, how we feel a lot of the time. Yes. And that's why the intake is so detailed because all of the other... Are you hot and cold? Are you are your appendages cold all of the time? Well, that's a thyroid issue. It can be. So you look at all of those and then you back it up with the test don't guess as well as treat the person, not the paper. So you combine the two and you use some logic. So I'm looking at your thyroid antibodies, your TG, your TPO antibodies, and they're elevated. Well, that is your indicator right there. That is your marker that tells me Hashimoto's plus you're symptomatic as well. So you put the two of them together and you say, okay, now what's our plan of action? So you tackle what they're eating, their lifestyle, all of those factors, as well as then if they're extremely elevated, you can look at the desiccated thyroid, which is by prescription, of course, by one of my um, NPs, or you can look at LDN, uh, low dose naltrexone is a game changer for so many with autoimmune conditions, whether it's patients who have Lyme, MS, Hashimoto's, um, diverticulitis, Crohn's, colitis, Crohn's and colitis patients that come to me don't want Humira, they don't want Remicade, they don't want a death sentence because to them, they know it's not if, but when they get cancer, because this is a very realistic side effect. So when they come to me, they're already open-minded and we explore alternative therapies. Um, naltrexone is an opioid therapy, but low dose is a off-label usage. So with LDN therapy, we are using it successfully to help keep those people in remission and it really does work. Okay. You said LDN. Yes. Can you explain? Just I, I want people as they're listening to not mm -hmm. miss something or miss the details. So what so, do you mean by that? 
Naltrexone is what we've used in much higher doses. It's Naltrexone is an opioid therapy for opioid addiction. But they notice that in minute doses, not micro doses, but smaller, low doses, you're looking at 0.5 milligrams up to a maximum of 4.5 milligrams rather than 50 plus milligrams. So it's not enough to really do anything for opioid addiction, but what it does do is help with the inflammation, the inflammatory markers, that autoimmune condition that you're suffering from. Like I said, MS, Lyme, Crohn's, colitis, anything like that, that's autoimmune inflammatory related. So we were noticing, and I say we because it's it's across the globe. I was trained uh, through the UK with this. You can see the studies. It is documented for the off-label use of it. I don't know why more people are not using it, but you can see that it is being used in studies. And every time they use it for something and then it works on something else, they go, oh, another thing it might work for. And then they delve into studying that aspect of it, which is very cool because it started out as using it for a few things off-label to using it for a lot of things off-label. And we're learning, you know, every year there's a whole bunch more studies that are added to the list. I think it's ldntrust.org, I believe it is, that you can go on and you can type in your condition and it'll populate with any and all of the studies that have been done based on your condition. And then you can take that, whether it's to myself or to your doctor and say, hey, I want to try this. Okay. So Holly, you said something right there that, that panics like that for me is when people go on you know google and it's google doc right they list symptoms yes. and then they they press enter and mm-hmm. then opens this pandora's box <laughs> yes. right so what what is what you're just saying go and do this and fill out things but, but specifically okay. go to ldntrust.org it's an organization that is specifically based on collecting the data they compile the data for this off-label use of this medication. So it's specific to that. So if you've already got a diagnosis and you know that you have Crohn's or you know that you have colitis, that's when you would go there and you would type in what your diagnosis was. Don't go rogue and like you said, Google, you know, Google degrees are dangerous thing. I see it all of the time. I do encourage people to be their own advocate because no one's going to stand out for you like you will. But by that same token, I could Google any number of symptoms and come out with cancer, gangrene, like, <laughs> you know what I Well, mean? that's the thing, right? Sometimes so, you do that and it's just, I'd rather yeah. just shut the computer. It's just, it's not worth, I think there's more anxiety that comes with putting things in and pressing, you know, enter on Google to, to what's actually happening because people are so desperate to figure out what's wrong with them and so desperate to feel better. We want an answer. We want a diagnosis. We want something that we can cling to. That's what we want. And once we find it, we go, okay, I have it. Now I have a label. Don't worry about your label. The label is not important. It's good to know what you have or what's going on so that we can assess and then we can have a plan of action. But by that same token, I see a lot of people wearing a label like a badge and you're not going to get better if you're wearing it like a badge. So just look at it like, okay, I've got this. Now I'm going to look at getting rid of this. Even if that just means remission, not cure, becoming asymptomatic without symptoms is possible in many, many cases. And you know what? There are cases where it's not possible, in which case our goal is realistic. And it says, let's see if we can get rid of eight out of 10 symptoms. Now you're left with two. Let's see if we can get those two to be as low as possible. Maybe it's a five out of 10 instead of a 10 on 10, but a five on 10 is still way better than nothing. Are most people coming to you because they're already, they're sick? Yeah. Or how much of the work is being done still on preventative care, that people are trying to be so proactive in making sure that their fluorides, their gut health, that everything is running as smoothly as possible (laughs) so that they're avoiding illness and being sick in the future. I don't, even though I I got into preventative medicine because I wanted to be uh, no longer on the cancer side of things, but on the prevention side of things, yet I still see people who come to me and most of them are, they're tired of being told it's in their head and they need answers. So it's no longer people just saying, I just want to be healthy. They can see anyone for that. That's not hard to maintain. Your health is actually pretty simple and we make it complicated. It's mostly the people that come to me that have something going on on a deeper level where they know, listen, I've had a scope done. I've had this done. I've had that done. I know something is going on, but nobody will help me. And I can't get the answers. Maybe they've had a colonoscopy and it's come back where they've had nothing. Maybe they just missed it. I know many people that have had more than one colonoscopy. It took three or four before they got a diagnosis where they said, oh, well, hang on a second. There's something there. Okay, so fourth time's the charm? In which case, 
all that time in between where that patient said, I know something's wrong. Why won't you listen? Why won't you help me? Well, doctors are limited as to what they can do. They have to have something concrete in order to say, Ooh, we can treat this now because I see it. They're bound by the College of Physicians, as are nurse practitioners. But in functional medicine, when it's private practice, we have a little bit more leeway where we can say, you know what? These things have come back. It's close enough to those parameters where it's concerning. We want you to be optimal. We're going to treat you to get you optimal. How do you describe it? what it is that you do? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Patient advocates really the best thing that I can say because we do so much. People come to me for answers. So what we do is functional medicine. We have the medical side of it. We do the organic acids testing through the states. I have clinicians in the states who are excellent when it comes to mold or Lyme. That's their specialty. So as much as I know, I then deflect for them to take over that particular case to get even more answers. I have the nurse practitioners. People come to me. It's menopause and it sucks. How can I make it not suck? Because it's not supposed to suck. Okay, bioidenticals. Let's do the lab work. Test your hormones. I also look at the thyroid because they're connected. Most doctors won't do that. They're going to go, here you go. Here's some estrogen cream that's synthetic. It's going to mess you up even more. So we look at what's biologically identical to the body. We prescribe based on your hormone levels, and then we monitor. And in as much as it took you time to get to where you are now, we wanted to get you back. It could take a year. It could take six months. It's never a quick fix. So we follow through with you on this health journey to get you back to being optimal. That's essentially what we do. There's a lot of um, blog comments, a lot of things you write about about the thyroid. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that such a, a big focus for you? Uh, I fought back for years um, on thyroid, just not because it didn't interest me, but just because I thought, oh God, it's thyroid. Like, who cares? It's so dis boring and un uninteresting. Okay, what is and it? That, let's, and let's just break that down right now. When you when because you've mentioned the thyroid a number of times, well, I felt what like are it people, wasn't. What are people supposed to think of when they think of a thyroid? This podcast is brought to you by Extension Marketing. They are a new breed of marketing agency that acts as your virtual marketing department designing and implementing cost-effective marketing strategies that will grow your business. I can speak to this personally as I've been using the extension marketing team to help me launch and grow my business. Founder Pat Whalen has been a lifesaver for me, a genuine coach guiding me along the way into uncharted territory. Tell them you're a friend of the show and receive a free one-hour consultation. Check them out at extensionmarketing.com. Well, it's like these little, little butterflies in your neck. But they regulate everything, your metabolism, your temperature, your, you know, they are life for us. And when we go to our doctor and we test, and it was, I was thrown into a talk in front of like hundreds of people where they said, you're talking about thyroid, go. And I went, holy crap. Uh, okay. I thought this was a hormone talk. Let's go off on thyroid. And that was when the moment happened where I went, a lineup. And I mean, it was lined up for hours afterwards of women crying, needing to talk to me and wanting my help. And I went, okay, you're letting people down. You're not addressing something that's a really big deal. We test thyroid stimulating hormone, your TSH, when you go to the doctor and that's it. Well, what the heck is that? That tells me nothing. If I have a broken leg, are you going to x-ray my toe and then send me home? I broke my leg. X-ray my leg. And the, we weren't doing that. So what is it that you want people to be doing with their thyroid then? If you feel like something might be wrong, at least once run a comprehensive thyroid panel where you look at not only your TSH, which is your thyroid stimulating hormone put up by the pituitary, it's going to stimulate your thyroid hormone. You want to look at your T4, which then gets converted into T3. Now you want to take it a step further and you want to look at the reverse T3. I, maybe I'm converting and I have enough T4, I'm converting it, but what am I converting it to? Because if I convert it to the reverse T3, that's no good. It okay. needs to be the active form. Now, you have just said a T, like I'm looking at the alphabet, and then the number three. So I'm yeah. like, okay, A, B, C, D, I know those, and I know how to count to 10. When you say T4 and you say T3, I know you know exactly what you're talking about. I'm kind of scratching my, my head here going, what is she referring Most to? Most people that have something going on with their thyroid or suspect it will know what those are because they've already done the research. They've already dug into it. They're following people online or they're Googling because that's what we do is we Google 
Um, and so they're going to know what it is. It's your thyroid hormone. And okay. it just means different. I like the iodine that's bonded to it. Like, is it, you know, four, is it three? That's all it is. It's different molecules that bind to it. It's But it has a difference if it's a three, if it's a four. Yeah. So one is an inactive form. So your inactive form is your T4. We have to convert it now into something that's active so the body can use it. And that becomes the T3. But sometimes we have issues with conversion because our gut health is off and we're converting to the wrong thing, which is the reverse T3, which then think of it like I took your house and I wrapped it in saran wrap about a hundred thousand times. That saran wrap is the reverse T3. Now you have the active form, which is T3, but I can't get in. I can't, it's bound. I can't get in. Now I've cemented that saran wrap. So that's the end of it. You're never getting in. Now I got to find a new cell that I got to get into. But what if there's a lot more RT3 than there is of the free T3? That's a problem because now that's binding to everything and your thyroid's a mess. So now we got to look at managing your stress and fixing your gut, getting it to convert properly into more of that and less of the RT3, the reverse T3. But then you also want to look at your antibodies because your antibodies are going to be elevated sometimes before we see other patterns within the thyroid. So before your TSH is wonky or your T4 is off or your T3 is a little bit out of range, sometimes we see it in the antibodies first. And it can be 10 years of elevated antibodies that you never tested for. That eventually you're paying the price for yeah, later on. Absolutely. You were talking about things to be able to help. And mm -hmm. one of the things is, as you mentioned, was chewing. Yeah. Okay. Can you take us through some of these things? Because I think <laughs> these little tips are, are, are fascinating. Yeah. Um, I like to, and you know, we have that saying, kiss, keep it simple, stupid for a reason. Go back to basics. You don't need to buy hundreds of dollars of supplements. Maybe in the beginning you need to just to get you back on track, but that's not how our bodies are designed. Our bodies are designed to be pretty efficient machines if you give them the right tools. And that first tool is when you, when you look at a lemon, mm -hmm. you cut a lemon open, you have a salivate a little bit, you get that little cell. Yeah. Okay. So your eyes are your first step to digestion. Sometimes even thinking, if you were to close your eyes and think of a lemon, you will salivate. You haven't even seen it. You haven't smelt it. You haven't looked at it. it it's just something that the brain goes, oh, prepare, release the enzymes. And this is what we do in our mouth. We release those enzymes. Certain specific enzymes, you know, amylase is one of them that's produced in the mouth that digests, you know, a bunch of carbs, etc. So that starts this sort of cascade of digestion. So you have the enzymes in the mouth and then they trigger the rest of the enzymes to go. We trigger our bile because we've triggered our hydrochloric acid in our stomach, our, our betaine and pepsin. Our, our stomach acid is, is key. And we're walking around with these protein pump, uh, proton pump inhibitors, these PPIs, these like antacids, like they're freaking candy. I'm going to take an antacid because it'll up my calcium. What on earth are you doing? Why would you do that? That's insane. You need your stomach acid. And 90% of my clinical practice is low stomach acid, not high. And if you don't have enough stomach acid, you're not triggering your bile production. You don't have enough enzymes. Your digestion is completely off. Now you've got this undigested goop in your stomach and you're not absorbing or utilizing your essential nutrients, your vitamins and your minerals. It's a whole cascade. And it starts with that first chew, that sight of food. So when you chew your food, and I tell people chew each bite 20 times, so it's like nothing. Oh my God, going to dinner with you must take forever. Well, like, it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to dinner with Holly. I'll be back in four hours. We're going to chew 20 times per bite. I am a, I like wow. to, I call myself a master masticator. Okay. Okay. So how does this, how does this happen? How does, does this, like, I'm just trying to think if I even sometimes even bite in twice. You Most know? people like, don't. We just, we just wolf our food down. My patients come back and they go, 20? How about 10? Always. I'm like, 10's fine. Take a smaller bite, chew it more. You're also going to digest it and realize that you're full quicker and probably not eat so much. I am OMAD and carnivore. I eat one meal a day and it's meat. And that is all I eat is animal products, which is something that is becoming more of a trend, but it was the, it was the answer that healed me. So Wow, it's funny like, that you say that, that that's becoming more of a trend, whereas the discussions that I seem to be having with people are totally going on to the oh, plant-based. Oh, vegan, based. yes. So like, this is where this industry is so insane, oh, right? Yeah. I can sit with one person and be like, everything's going plant-based, and mm -hmm. then you sit with another person, and it's like, 
you know, it's it's carnivore, it's animal. So there's a huge vegan no wonder rush are right so now for sure. Torn, yeah, right? There's absolutely. so much information for both. I love and hate the vegan movement. I have friends who are vegan and we go and we eat together and it's fine. Listen, you eat your food. I eat my, we don't talk religion. We don't talk politics. We might talk sex, but we don't talk food. <laughs> like you pick your poison and that's fine. I don't care what you eat as long as you feel good and are actually doing okay. Mm-hmm. So you do you and it's fine. However, I know that I was heavily plant-based for over 10 years. Whole food plant-based was fantastic and I loved it and I felt great until I didn't. But I was so convinced that I needed to maybe just have more greens. Maybe I needed more wheatgrass. Maybe I needed more sprouts. I mean, this was my jam for so many years. And then I had a colleague of mine in the States who said, I'm going carnivore. And I went, you're nuts. Like, you're off your rocker. You're going to die. And I watched her for a year. And then I went, okay, I'm going to do it. This is crazy. What am I doing? And I tested my labs and I did it. And for the first time in 10 years, I didn't have cold urticaria. There's no cure for that. We don't even know what causes it. It's my whole body breaks it in hives and a rash from cold. I'm allergic to the cold. And I live in Ottawa, Canada. Um, not ideal. And I didn't have it. I had only done two weeks carnivore. And I thought, That's, this can't be. It's a coincidence. And I kept testing and all of my markers went back to where they should be. And it took the fiber out of my diet because I'm just eating meat. Yet I pooped better than I've pooped in my entire life. I I didn't have spasms and I didn't have IBS anymore. And I didn't have all of these things. And then my vitamins started going up. Well, hang on a second. How can my vitamins be going up when I'm living off of ribeye and eggs? And and this doesn't make any sense until it did make sense. And for me, it was the answer. And for many of my autoimmune patients, it's been the answer. And I still have ones that do paleo and I still have ones that do, you know, not vegan, but more towards the vegetarian. Everyone's different. And then we test their oxalates and we realize they're through the roof and they go, I'm not getting better on this way of life. Maybe I'll dabble a little bit in carnivore and we see what happens. And if it doesn't work genetically or whatever, then we stop. Well, that's the whole thing, right? Is that it's so individualized yeah. on how, and how we, how everything happens. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we got onto this from the chewing. Yes. So we're onto the, the 10 to 20 bites of chewing. Yep. It starts to get the whole digestive process yes. going. And that's mm-hmm. one way to be able to start. One thing I also noticed was this mouth taping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like W, <laughs> WTF. <laughs> what, what are, what is this? So a colleague of mine in the States a couple of years ago, Mike Mutzel, if anybody's not following him, they should be because he's just brilliant. Um, he, he made a YouTube video and he, we were joking around. He's like, oh, mouth taping. And I'm like, come on, buddy. Like you, you're into the science. This is kind of woo woo. What are you doing? But literally, um, and I don't mean duct tape your mouth like you're being abducted and thrown in a trunk. I mean up and down, not side to side. And you can use the medical tape that's going to be nice and gentle. There are things that you can buy online, but you don't need to. Just go get the tape from the pharmacy and it's fine. And start in the evening so that you don't have claustrophobic effects of it and just do it while you're watching TV for five minutes, 10 minutes. And if you're fine, work up to 20, then 45. And when you feel comfortable, then you do it all night to sleep. Mouth breathing kills your oral microbiome. That oral microbiome, again, same pathway, goes all the way down to your gut. We have the skin's microbiome. We have all these different microbiomes. So you need to make sure that it's thriving and fully functioning. And you're killing off good bacteria and encouraging the growth of bad bacteria, which can lead to um, neurological issues. It, you know, The gut-brain connection, that access that we have, you can lead to depression, you know, it, seasonal affective disorder, mouth taping helps with that. Why? Well, you're just putting back the microbes that we need. We're not exposed to as much sunlight outside as much. So you have to do everything you can to help yourself. And these are the little things that cost you nothing that will help. So yeah, you do mouth taping. When you're breathing through your nose, it's completely different than breathing through your mouth. So you suggest doing this at night. Do it while you sleep, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's the best way to do it. You, I mean, you need to be helped. Like, I mean, someone with a stuffy nose and... You Your body's not going to let you die. Mm-hmm. And the tape is not duct tape. So if you need to pop your mouth open, you will pop your mouth open. You'll... It, your body will not uh, let you die. Sleep apnea. Like what do people who have sleep issues, how do they feel uh, about this? I don't recommend it to my patients with sleep apnea. I know some clinicians do. Personally, I feel as though I just... I don't... I look at other avenues 
to see if we can correct the sleep apnea before we get into the mouth taping. So there are exceptions mm -hmm. to every rule, of course. I thought it was interesting because you said it really diminishes morning breath. Mm -hmm. I, just because we aren't breathing in. Mm -hmm. Well, what is morning breath? Bacteria. <gasps> oh, look at that. I took a deep breath. Look at all that bacterial growth of ickiness. And it helps with that. I thought that was really interesting. Okay, and, and I did see the tape that you're using. We're not talking like a duct tape here. No. It's, it's the medical tape, right? Yeah, like, yeah. And, and gently. Gentle adhesive, medical tape. It's not meant, to, it's just meant to help. And so but, you. even just to try it for like five minutes. Try Start it for with the five, five see yeah. how you do. Like yeah. some people would kind of almost go into like a panic. Well, that's not, that claustrophobic kind of right. panic. Like if it gives you anxiety, I, it, that's not helping you. I don't want you to be doing it. So I want you to start with five minutes. You just, you take the tape, you put it on for five minutes while you're watching TV, reading a book because you're distracted, playing on your phone, you're distracting your mind. So it's not thinking about the fact that mm, mm, I'm, I'm taped. This is panic. So you're helping the body come to terms with this isn't scary and this is okay. And then you go to 10 minutes and then you go to 20 minutes. And then when you're at 20 minutes, you work your way up to 45. And once you're at 45 and you're good to go, then, yeah. you know, you put it on at nighttime. Oh, I'm used to it now. And by that time you've fallen asleep. So it's good for that eight hours or seven hours of sleep. Okay. Yeah. I've hit on the chewing. I wanted to get on that. I hit on the <laughs> mouth taping. Um, there was another great article I had that was really a lot of it on bitters. Mm -hmm. And I started to see that you have a ton of information yeah. on consuming, on, on the absorption of bitters. Yeah. So what do we mean by bitters? So bitters go, I actually have a company that my partner and I created called Slippery Buddha. And we've developed the first line of tinctures infused with terpenes across North America. It, as far as we know, it's only North America because we haven't delved into other countries, you know, further out, but no one's been able to figure out the process and we have, and it's a game changer because we use bitters and different tinctures for everything. I have an herbal alchemist background. So playing with herbs, I grew up with a mortar and pestle playing with herbs and making tinctures for, you know, ailments and pace for this and whatnot. So knowing that you can pop a digestive enzyme or you can take an herb that's going to help promote your body's ability to produce that enzyme, which after the age of 30 does start to decline pretty dramatically. So what can I do? You know, I can take something to replace something or I can take something to help my body do its job. Which would you prefer? Well, I want to take something that's going to help my body do its job. You go to Europe, you've got pastilles, you've got bitters, you've got bitter herbs, you've, you know, your salad with arugula, that's bitter. You're having that with your meal. So it promotes these you know, in our, that saliva, those enzymes that we have, bitters are meant to pr promote the enzymes. So I have um, artichoke, which helps to promote the lipase, which is very important on a carnivore diet or any diet. So you want to have the enzymes that digest the fat, the protein, the carbs, the whatever it is that you're eating to help your body utilize the vitamins and minerals that are in the food. You've got, you know, Hawthorn berries. There's anything bitter that's put into bitters, and there's a ton of different bitter. Okay, foods anything that go bitter in. that's put into bitters. Anything bitter is put into bitters. That's what makes them bitters. It's the so bitter it's, taste. So when you talk about it, it's a bitter taste. So if Very you're saying, ta yeah. tasting something that's bitter, yeah, there's something in it that actually is helping the body. Yes, that bitter signals the brain to produce the things that are needed for digestion. Hmm. Yeah. So we we think digestive enzymes, which makes me giggle because most of these enzymes there's a hierarchy to them. Their primary function is actually to promote healing. So you look at our proteolytic enzymes, the proteases, one, two, and three, for example, they're meant to repair. So if you take them away from food, say at nighttime before you go to bed, they're going to help your muscles, help your body repair your tissues. So you worked out at the gym, you take those before bed, you'll recover quicker, you'll have a better recovery. But if you, the second you consume something food-wise, your body goes, hold up, hang on a second, hierarchy kicks into play here. It's more important that we digest this food than repair this muscle. Let's get over here, guys, and do our job. And they digest, digest, digest. And then when they're done, whatever's left goes back to repairing. So bitters, their primary and only function is digestion, whereas these enzymes have two different functions. Okay, so in, that, in saying that, mm -hmm. what's your take on, it, on fasting? I think it's great. If you're an, in a healthy state and your body can handle it and you do it properly, absolutely, yes. Fasting is fantastic. I see different schools of thought on mm -hmm. fasting. Um, I kind of sit where I base it on the individual. 
Some people do a 48 hours. Some people do a 72 hours. Some people do oh, a 12 gosh, I'm and 16. Oh gosh, I'm just talking about going, to, you know, not eating after dinner and then waiting until <laughs> the lunch. Yeah, no, I, I wasn't, like, I wasn't, you're, you're talking like 48 hours. You're talking, you're yeah. talking long fast. Oh, there's different. I mean, there's water fasting. There's like, this air fasting, which if you're not supervised by a doctor, please don't do it. I'm sorry, what? Air, air. fasting, meaning you don't even consume water. I see people just like, they just breathe. They're air fasting. There's no water. There's no nothing. There's a title for that. That's called air fasting. Yes. Air fasting. That's by not consuming We also water. call it idiotic. Okay. That's okay. Let's just double check. If that. you don't have a severe, like if there's, there's a medical condition that warrants this and you're supervised by a physician that's trained in that, mm-hmm. have at her. I don't do it. I don't advocate for it. I would say go see this person because they do that and they're going to monitor you. But they need to monitor you. Like we need to be testing and monitoring. What's your blood pressure doing? What's your heart rate doing? What's There's a number of factors. You don't just go willy nilly and be like, I'm going to survive off of air for a while. Well, Maybe not so long. <laughs> I'm I not a fan. comprehend that. Yeah. Water fasting is fine. I mean, you put your salt in the water. You've given your body the electrolytes that it needs. You're good to go. You can do that for a couple of days if you want to. Sure. Have absolutely. you ever tried anything like this? I did 72 hours once. I like coffee. I'm not going to lie. Okay. What is your take then? Coffee, wine, uh, some of the good indulgence that we have as I sip my coffee right now. If your mm-hmm. body can handle it, then go for it. You know, there's, you know, what are we, what are we concerned with? Are we looking at the oxalates that are in the coffee or are we not too concerned with that? Cause they're low or the, what is the concern with Are We looking at your adrenals. It's going to tax my adrenals out. There's a tincture for that. <laughs> like, okay. I get that. But a lot of the things that you talk about is adrenal fatigue, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, we're pumping in coffee and I, I have a friend, it's like, they're like six in the morning, You're like six coffees Ooh. to get themselves going. Right. Like there's, there's a, there's something between craving and, and, and smelling that first cup of coffee yep. in the morning and the need to be able to consume that much caffeine to get through your day. I was two pots a day, two pots of coffee. Like your grandma put a big old pot on. I was two pots of coffee a day on when a was slow that? day. Loved it. I was 12 years old and waking up with a cup of coffee. It was just, we had coffee, copious amounts of cream in it. So, I mean, was it, was it more coffee or more cream? Probably more cream. But yeah, I was just, that was just our way of life. And then I became an adult and my adrenals kicked back. Um, we no longer really call it adrenal fatigue. It's more adrenal, um, it's dysfunction and maladaptation. Okay, but it's a buzzword, so it's, right? It's, it's totally a buzzword. a buzzword. So what is it, you know, is it beyond just feeling tired or in the, in this, you know, flight or fight or flight, or fight or flight. It goes back to that bio-individuality. So if you and I are in traffic and we both get cut off in traffic, your reaction and my reaction might be two completely different things. You might panic, not saying that you would, but mm-hmm. I'm using you as an example. You might panic and be like, Oh my God, I almost died. It's the end of that. Your day is ruined. You're getting to work. You're shaking. You're just like, I can't even concentrate. I don't want to look at my, Oh my God. Oh my God. It was so bad. I could have died. And then maybe there's me who's like, you're a dick. Off we go to work and no harm, no foul. Same scenario, same thing happened to both of us, but we reacted completely differently. That stress response for both of us was different. How do you adapt to stress? That perceived stress versus how I adapt to it. Now, maybe I am one of those people who thrives off of a lot of stress, whereas if you removed it, I get sick because I'm like, oh, nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. I'm not, I'm not, go, 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 go. Well, wait a second. I don't know how to sit and relax. That's a completely different ball game right there. So for our adrenals, we're looking at where's your cortisol lie? In the morning, you want it to be the highest. That's where your salt water kicks into play because salt feeds the adrenals. So if you're doing the right things, put some salt, then an hour later have your coffee. If you can handle having a coffee, have a coffee. If it starts to give you the jitters, maybe reassess a little bit. Okay, but you just mentioned there before having the coffee, having water with salt. Salt water, yeah. Salt feeds the adrenals. Support your adrenals. Support your liver. Support all of the systems of your body so they can do their job, and they will do their job. Okay, but that's a very basic thing to do is drink salt water. Yeah. So we're talking a glass of water with how much salt? So what I tell people to do is make a sole, S-O-L-E, sole, or a salt brine. And keep So you take these little Himalayan salt rocks, okay. throw them in a jar, top it up with your nice spring water or whatever, and just let it do its thing. And then after 24 hours, whatever dissolved, that's your brine. So you take a tablespoon of that. For most people, I say a teaspoon because a tablespoon for me is great. But for some people, it's like, oh God, that's horrible. So you can work your way up. Put that teaspoon into water, eight Mm -hmm. ounces, put it beside your bed at night. 
Now in the morning when you wake up, it's room temperature, so it's not cold. Before your feet touch the ground, just kind of roll over, grab that glass, sit up a little bit, chug her back. The first thing you did when your adrenals woke up was feed them. See how your day goes. Okay. I love this. And you know what? I remember um, Stephanie Karlovitz was in, mm -hmm. uh, and she, and I know that's something that she does, and she wakes up in the morning, and that's the first thing she has. Okay. So I want to go through this again, because okay. I think it's really interesting in how, how you make it, because... It's, it's a little bit different and it's being having, having this really high concentrate. So Himalayan. So the pink, the, the pink, pinker the rock, the better. So the pinker, the rock, yeah, the better. Deep, like almost reddish, orangey pinks, not the white. That's going to have more of the mineral content that you're okay, looking so for. So you get them at a health food store. Yeah. Like I mean, it. Cardish has them. Okay. Um, most local health food store have some grocery stores. Big, have them. deep Big, red, yeah. pink. like yep. throw those in yeah. a container of water. Like, yeah. like. However, like a, a mason jar, a, a big mason, mason jar. jar, a big yeah. mason jar. Okay, yeah. we put, how much? How many rocks would we put in there? I put like two or three. Okay, but I like it really salty. Okay, <laughs> then we add the water. Yeah, and then you just let it sit. Let it sit. Do uh, twelve hours minimum. So do twelve hours. See how much. Then shake it up, and then take your tablespoon, throw it in your water. It doesn't need to be an absolute science. As long as you're getting some of it into you. It's okay. That's okay. Yeah. But that's the but that's gonna be the teaspoon that you're gonna put into the other glass of water that's yes. gonna sit by your bed. Yeah. And that's what you're gonna consume in the morning. Yes. Before you even touch your feet. Nobody to the ground. wants an ice cold glass of water first thing in the morning. Your body's no. like warm and hot. And so right. you want this to be now I know it's winter and, and so maybe it'll still be on the cool side, but as close as you can to being, you know, your body temperature is ideal. So yeah, just kind of chug that back. The second your feet hit the ground, your adrenals wake up and they go, Go time, let's do this. So you want to feed them, get that where it's supposed to be. And plus it's electrolytes and it's extremely healthy for you. Okay. But that's a simple thing people can do. That's Sometimes easy, people yeah. are looking for, okay, what's the simple thing I can do? That's it. That's not going to be too. Mouth thin. taping, add in that salt water in the morning, chew your food. You don't even need me now. <laughs> You're good to go. <laughs> I mean, you still need me, but in most cases, those are the three things that I tell everyone to do. And when they actually incorporate them, I always get the email going, this is bullshit, Holly. Sorry, am I allowed to swear? No, you are. Too. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. But they can't, they can't, like, I can't, I can't get over this. This is, this is insane. How, how is it this simple? What, don't I need to buy an expensive supplement? No. What? This is it? Yes, that's it. Now that we're healing what we can heal, see how you're doing in two weeks, then we'll, what's left? And then we'll start to tweak things here and there and see what's left. Okay. You have two daughters. I do. How do they, what do, do you watch how they chew? Do you watch what they're doing? My younger one, um, she's very much her father's daughter where I'm like, breathe, chew food. My older one was delicate. She cuts and she eats and everything else. And we're, you know, we're a steak family and the kids love meat. Um, my older one's not as adventurous, but my younger one is. We had heart the other day and oh my gosh. you know, I fried it up with some butter and some salt and I was eating it. She's like, well, what is that? I said, it's kind of like a sausage, but not. She's okay. I'll try it. So she tried it. She said, oh, I like this. So she had another piece and I said, it's chicken heart. And she said, I'm eating a heart. I said, yes, it's a heart. And she went, is there any left? Can I have more? She was fine with it. A couple of months ago, I, I had tried lamb brain. I did not make it very well. And my friend brought a skull, a lamb skull okay, to I, my okay. house. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> this is not how I, I, I looked over it. at Veronica and all, all of a sudden it's like our eyes are just like, what is going on This here? is a thing. I had no idea. There's like places that sell the whole, whole I lamb can't. head. I can't. the tongue and the eyeballs and... No, 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 no. My partner wouldn't come in out of the driveway. She's like, mm -mm, no. And when you've cleaned everything up and there is no residue, you let me know and I'll come home. Until then, a good day to you, sir. <laughs> okay. I, you know what? You, you mentioned your partner. So I hope you don't mind that I, I want to ask about this because oftentimes when we're living our authentic self, yeah. a lot of things align a lot better, mm -hmm. right? And so I know you have two daughters yeah. um, with the fathers, but you, you know, you, you have the old fashioned way, <laughs> the old fashioned way, two daughters, but, a and B equals C. But, you know, your partner's a woman yeah. and, and was there something that your body, that the mind and body connected when you, when you started to live the life without holding on the stress yeah. or wondering what wasn't working? Cause yeah. I start to feel that in the discussions that I'm having with people, sometimes just being true to themselves. Yeah. 
is sometimes half the battle. I was preaching so much that, you know, our voice and our thyroid are connected. So when you're not speaking your truth, which is why I'm sassy, because that's my truth, but I'm true to me and who I am and that helps people. But there was a piece of my truth that I wasn't living that I hadn't really recognized and I hadn't come out with because it was, I mean, I was raised in a, in a Baptist family and, you know, you got married, you made babies and that was your lot in life. And I, I just... It didn't appeal to me. I was not, this is always the same complaint, Holly. You know, you don't want to hold my hand. You don't kiss ever, like ever. And if we're intimate, it's because you had some tequila. Like you just don't, it's, you know, you're, you're cold. And I thought, but I'm affectionate with my kids. Like I'm not cold. I just like, ugh, it's cringy. And I connect to a person's mind and a sense of humor. And I'm very much attracted to that. So I was attracted to the person, not to take anything away from um, my male companions I've had throughout my life. They each... And every single one of them had something about them that was fantastic, but if something was missing. And I think that when I finally was honest with myself and said, I am not, I'm not heterosexual. And I don't like the term bisexual because I, I truly don't have an interest in that way with males. I am a lesbian. And then I said the words out loud and my partner, who at the time had been my friend for, I think something like five or six years, she said, don't, don't label yourself. And she's through and through lesbian. Like that's it. That's all. But she's like, you don't know, you don't need to wear that hat. You don't need a label. You just, you're attracted to the person and that's okay. And I said, no, for the first time in my life, I fit the label. And it was like a sigh, a deep breath um, my shoulders dropped and a weight off. And I thought I found my space. Like this is me. And it's so cool because the stress went away and I was calmer and I smiled more and I was happier. And I think a better mother. Um, and one of my exes commented, he's like, it makes you a better parent because you're, you're happy in a way that you couldn't be happy before. So yeah, it's, it's very much finding your truth and having the courage to walk in it. Because you speak now, right? Mm -hmm. You speak, you do lectures, you do presentations. And I think a lot of women come to you, but there's also in seeing that like People are sick sometimes because they're holding on yeah. to so much. Yes. Not, not, I don't want to say lies, but there's so much additional things that they're not they're holding dealing with. To, they're holding yeah. on to, and it's the yeah. gut. And, and mm -hmm. sometimes it just needs to be. Trauma resides in our gut. Yes. So when we don't talk about our trauma or release our truth, our thyroid and our gut, which again are connected, right? We're not going to get better. So sometimes for these patients, I look at their labs and you're on the right, you've got the right script. You've got the supplements down pat. The lifestyle is fantastic. You're on, maybe you're on LDN, maybe you're on desiccated thyroid, maybe you're just taking a probiotic, whatever the case may be, you're doing everything right in theory on paper. And we have the conversation and I say, you didn't deal with the trauma. You didn't deal what happened to you in childhood. You haven't talked about X, Y, and Z something's not right. And this is what we call breakthrough sessions. And it's a part of what I do. Everything I do is confidential. So they know they can talk to me, but when they talk to me, they know they're also talking to someone who's going to be their advocate and their friend. And I'm going to listen and I'll listen. And if you say, all I want you to do is hear the words and then do nothing with it, then that's what we do. But you've said the words and that's key. And then sometimes I do incorporate EFT, which is like, it's like tapping. And I have um, a practitioner where she does that. And I have some patients where I've said, I can't move forward in what we're doing until you see her tap it out, deal with that mommy issue, daddy issue, uh, bullying issue, whatever the case may be. And they do that and they find their truth. And then they come back and all of a sudden their healing is going through the roof because they've released that. Right. And, and sometimes that's it, right? Is yeah. that everything on paper is showing you're doing the right things. And yet there's so much that's yeah. being held on to. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just want people to say, stop looking at all the checks <laughs> or yeah. what's lacking or what's missing or what yeah. you haven't done because the work is actually. Look inside. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. And you felt that when you, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. when you were able to live your authentic self. hundred percent. So the tiny little things, I mean, I was pretty healthy and I knew what to do. So I have an edge. Um, I also, I went through a surgical procedure, which, um, was a nightmare and, um, a lot of people are really sick because of it. And I'm one of the lucky ones where I got out in time and had a great doctor who worked with me because of my background. And she's like, listen, 
there's there's no literature to support that these eSure devices could be causing your thyroid issues or could be could lead to cancer or like any of the things that you're suffering from. What was it? It's called eSure. What is um, that? I'm sorry. It's no longer in the market. Um, they've pulled it in Canada, the States, everywhere. Bayer, there's a huge lawsuit against Bayer in Canada and the States and all over the place. It's they, They're like heart stints, the coils, only they were using them to put into your, um, your tubes. So tubal ligation. And OHIP had stopped covering for women after the age of 35. And this was your free option. And now they cover again because they pulled that. But people were getting sick. They were getting autoimmune conditions, thyroid, um, hair falling out, teeth breaking. Um, I guess some pieces, some patients got cancer. It was a big, a big, big deal. Um, and my pain, like for me, part of the my medical background, I'm like, no, it's fine. There's PET fibers in them that create a localized inflammation to fuse, but it didn't. It created a systemic inflammation that was slowly killing me and many other people who have had it. So I also am an advocate for that as well. Um, but yeah, so that was a part of, I think, also in speaking my truth was I can't lose my uterus. This is my womb. This is my my womanhood. Well, I, I'm going to be 42 in December. I'm not making any more babies. What do I need it for? It doesn't make me more or less of a woman because I don't have a uterus. I tell my patients that having a uterus is not, they don't need it for anything. It doesn't make you a woman. Yet here I am sitting here hanging on to it like it's my my seat of my power. <laughs> and so that was part of my truth as well was coming to terms with that and saying, it's got to go. It's making me sick. And we removed it. And it was it was a long process to coming to terms with that. I had to talk to my therapist about it. I talked to friends about it. I tapped it out. <laughs> like it's a lot of tapping. And then I came to terms with that. And that was also part of my truth and the health journey. Uh, tapping. Yeah. I've, I've seen people, I actually have a friend on Instagram who like every day, it's like, I can see her, you know, yeah, she's just tapping and I'm tapping. like, okay, and I, I, I don't, I don't get it because I don't know what, where, where your where the pressure points are or what you're releasing. So, but it's, it's something that I'm seeing a lot more yeah. and being hmm. mentioned a lot more. Yeah. Can you explain? I'm not an EFT practitioner, okay. which is why I, I deal with my friend Diane uh, Lancier. And she is like, she's my go-to. When when shit goes down, I go to her. I'm like, Diane, we need to tap it out. <laughs> Help. And she's like, okay, I'll call you on my lunch hour. And we go through and she tells me where to tap. And for me, a lot of times I just do it kind of wherever on my hand. But what is it and doing? Like, what is it? I don't, it's, an, it's like an emotional energy release and mm. Whatever it is that you're holding on to, that energy, that emotion that you're holding on to, it helps to release it. And it can be hard because you're saying the words like, you know, I I am enough and I am okay and I am this and I you have to and I love myself. And so many people have problems saying, It is not my fault. I love myself. It is not my fault. I love myself. I am okay. I am not, and you're saying these things and you start bawling because you're like, well, what the heck? You know, and, and I am not weak or whatever the case may be that you have to say. And sometimes there's a block where I'm like, I'm not saying that. That's stupid. And she's like, that's your block right there. So say it. And it's a fight. And then I do say it and I bawl and I release something and I go, oh, I was holding on to something. There it is. So I don't know how she does it. I just know that she does it mm -hmm. and other practitioners do it and they have the training and I'm not doing it justice in how I describe it. So I normally just send people, I'm like, but go see her. <laughs> yeah. It's not about doing justice. I think it's about people opening their mind to yeah. a number of different ways where, you know, people just, they want to feel good. Mm -hmm. They want to be happy. Mm -hmm. They want to be grateful for the life that they have or the health. And so sometimes you just, there's different things that you find that it's yeah. worth trying. And I, and I think that's the, well, I find that's the beauty of the podcast too, is just exposing yeah. people to, to a number of different things. You deal with a lot of your clients just via like a it's computer all, screen. It's yeah. all done. It's, it's all telemedicine. Okay. I shut down the in-person clinical part of it a couple of years ago because I I'm global. So I'd have a morning, you know, session in like Texas or something, an afternoon ones in California and some here. And a lot of the patients that were here in Ottawa were like, hang on, I don't need to fight traffic to go downtown and pay for parking to see you. I can do this telemedicine thing. Well, then let's do that instead. And, you know, CEOs of company that are like, listen, I'm busy. I don't have time to travel. You've got 30 minutes of my time now. And that's what we did. And it just allowed me to see more patients and serve more people. And so I, I just said, like, I'm not going to do the in-person ones anymore. 
There was no. It's not really in person, point. but it's in. It's you, you're, there's a. Sc- there's a screen. There's a screen. It's still in person. Like I still right. see you, but it's it's just there's, there's a screen. So yeah. there's still yeah. the dialogue. Yeah, which I like. Well, I think so. Well, and usually through the dialogue, you can see. Yes. You, you, the answers start to come out. The yes. facial expressions, the the, inquis- the inquisitive, it has the thoughtful worked well. I mean, I don't need to be in front of you to see what's in your eyes and see the emotion that you're expressing. I can see you through a screen. Mm-hmm. You can still connect. I'm able to connect. And you're able to do the blood work, the requisitions, everything like that. Everything is emailed, yeah. So we have an EMR, which is electronic medical records, which um, we have to have because everything needs to be compliant, right? Mm-hmm. Security and privacy and all of that. Um, you know, confidentiality forms and consent forms and everything like that is emailed through an encrypted email. So it is encrypted. The requisitions mailed to you, email, and then you go get your blood work done at Life Labs or Gamma Dynacare or, you know, LabCorp, depending on Canada, U.S., and then the results are faxed because we still use faxes in 2019. Who knew? <laughs> it's faxed to the ordering practi- uh, practitioner, nurse practitioner or MD, and also CC to me. So I have the results as well. And we just go from there. Your script is faxed into the pharmacy. Everything's. It can be done that way. Absolutely. You don't have to sit and, and wait in yeah. waiting rooms. and Most wait practices are, are moving like that. Even your GP is like, oh, it's you called in, you have a cold. It's just telemedicine. You do it on your phone. It's great. There's live care and different apps that a lot of the walking clinics have now. So it's the future. It's the, it's the way things are changing mm-hmm. and the information that's coming out for sure. Yeah. Uh, I highly suggest people head to the website because that's where I went and had, there was a ton of stuff. There's a lot of videos. Do you enjoy that part? Just doing the videos and, and just talking? It's fun. I like it. That's the fun part of my job. Plus, if somebody, if I get enough questions about something, you know, okay, I'm going to do a video so mm-hmm. that people can just go to my YouTube channel, you know, you just go Holly Wonder Health on YouTube, you find me and you click on the video that resonates and you yeah. can watch it as many times as you want to. And there's free information. You didn't pay my fee. You get to watch it. I try to make it funny and quirky so it's not so dry. Well, I think people would have realized that through the podcast today. Yeah. <laughs> there's a little bit of dry, dry and quirky that that uh, that falls in there. HollyWarnerHealth.com mm-hmm. uh, is the best place to go. Once again, HollyWarnerHealth.com, exactly how it sounds and just spell it out and a ton of information there thank you so much this was there was a lot of great information and like right now i can take like five things that i'm gonna go home awesome. and be able to do i'm okay. going to attempt the chewing definitely the salt water i've had enough people saying it's the start do it <laughs> that uh definitely gonna be able to at least give implement that and see how we feel right because it's mm-hmm. it's all it's how we feel I totally feel that. And I just want to be able to say thank you as well. I've got some great guests coming in, but to those that are listening and liking and subscribing and sharing the podcast and allowing Living Your Life with Lan Lang to be able to grow the way it has, uh, it's wonderful to see. So if you can, and I'm noticing this too, I need people to head in and rate it. Kind of, well, just give me the five stars because you've been listening long enough. So just go five stars. Oh my God, this podcast is amazing. Love the guests. I really do love the emails that I get from people. I just had one the other day that was like, I, they're, they're at work at night and they, they just play them in the office at night while, while they're there. And it was really a nice, uh, a nice email to get. So thank you to everyone who's doing that. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you once again next week. Holly, have a great day. Thanks, you too.